We know that light travels very fast in air or a vacuum. It travels at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So if we have light traveling through this really in this really fast manner, three times 10 to the eighth, um, and it goes into a new material, we know it's gonna bend. We know it's gonna bend. Okay, it bends. It doesn't go in a straight line. And if we then look at what happens in that material and try to figure out why it bends or how much it's gonna bend, then we can start to come up with a math mathematical relationship. And it's based on how fast light travels here, three times 10 to the eighth, and how slow, how much, how much, I'll say less fast, it travels here, the velocity of light in the material. And we know that it's gonna to bend towards the medium Excuse me, towards the normal, towards the medium. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Okay, so if I get right in there, we know that this angle and this angle are gonna be different because the light doesn't go straight through. It bends towards the normal in the slow material. If I shine light the other way, light bends, going from slow to fast, bends away from the normal. So we know some light gets reflected and we know the angle of reflection. Some light gets absorbed. This is pretty clear, so there's not that much absorption. And then some gets refracted. So Snell's law is what helps us understand the relationship between these two angles and the speeds of light in those two materials. To characterize how fast light travels in a material, we're going to use a thing called the index of refraction, N, index of refraction. And the index of refraction is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in the material we're interested in. So this is the, as fast as anything can go, 3 times 10 to the 8th. This is going to be slower or equal. So at the very least this has to be one. It's generally going to be more than one. One point something, two point something, maybe possibly three point something for the materials we're talking about. Um, so this ratio, the index of refraction, we can use to help figure out, predict where the light will go when it enters a new medium. And the rule that we use is Snell's law. Snell's law says that when we have a boundary, I'm going to call this material one and material two, and we'll draw our normal, and light comes in there, and by the way this is symmetric and bends towards the normal. We call that the angle of incidence And we call this the angle, this, I'll just write it down here, boom, boom, boom. angle of refraction. Remember we had the angle of reflection, because some light bounces off there, and this angle would be equal to that. But this angle here is going to be the angle of refraction. Okay. But more commonly, since this is a symmetric thing, we really just say, theta 1 and theta 2. If light were heading this direction, you call that theta 1, that theta 2, it doesn't really matter what you call it. This has an index of refraction. Let's say it's air. Index of refraction in air, 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th, 1. Okay. So if it's coming out of a vacuum or air and entering Glass. Glass may have an index of refraction of something like, uh, let's just say 1.45. Notice it's unitless. This is a velocity, this is a velocity, it's just a ratio. So this means in air or a vacuum, light travels 1.45 times faster than it does in this material. Well, Snell's law tells us that N1 
index of refraction in the first material times the sine in degrees theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2. And there's a lot of derivation you can do for this. Um, but basically, index of refraction in one material times the sine of the angle in one material equals index of refraction in the second material times the sine of the angle in second material. So let's do this calculation right here and let me actually get a calculator. So if we do this, then we say, in, we call this material one again. We can call this material one and that material two. It doesn't matter. It's symmetric. So we have one sine of whatever angle there is in there. So let's find out, if I shoot this in at 60 degrees, let's find out where it will bend. So 60 degrees, again, want that in, um, well, for measuring in degrees, we want to put that in there. And then 1.45 sine of theta 2. Sine of 60 degrees is 0 0.866 equals 1.45 sine theta 2. Sine of theta 2 is going to be 0.866. Uh, 0.866 divided by 1.45. That ends up being 0 0.597. Now, to get that, we need to do the inverse sine of both sides. Whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. Inverse sine of 0.597 is the inverse sine of sine of theta 2. Let me write that. Inverse sine of sine of theta 2, which just basically cancels those out and gives me theta 2. So in here, I'm going to put second inverse sine of 0.597 equals... 36.6 degrees. That means this angle would be 36.6 degrees. Does that make sense? Well, it bends towards the normal, so this has to be a smaller number. Okay? Let's do this in reverse. What we'll do is we'll do an experiment that will determine the index of refraction of another material. So let's do an experiment to find the speed of light in this material, this plasticky material. And if I'm going to do this very carefully, I'm going to do a whole bunch of different trials for a whole bunch of different angles. But what I've got here is I'm going to use this as my normal line in both directions. And I'm going to make a pretty, I don't know, let's just do that angle in somewhere in here. Okay, and I want to aim right at the center of that face. Here's why. When this line comes down here, if it is perpendicular to this surface, it'll just keep going in a straight line. So I can use this to measure. Whoop, I want to move this up. So I can use the uh, protractor here to measure the refraction angle. Okay, so if I get that lined up, this is 80, 70, 60 degrees. So that'll be my angle of incidence, 60 degrees right there. And it's coming from air and going into this material. And remember air, N is one. So one times the sine of 60, hey, that's kind of handy. I've done that twice now. And the angle of refraction is from the normal, this is the normal line, 10, 20, 37, I'm going to say 37.3 degrees. 37.3 degrees, looks like I'm running out of ink. And when I solve this equation, sine of 60, hey, 866 equals N2 times the sine of 37.3 degrees, which ends up being... 0.60, I'm going to round it to 0 0.606, 0 0.606, and then if I divide both sides by 0 0.606, I get 1.43 N2 
equals 1.43. It's really interesting because it's very close to what I'd put on the uh, example. So I get 1.43. What does index of refraction mean? Remember, index of refraction is C divided by the velocity in the material, the speed of light in the material. So if I do 1.43 equals 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by V, I can find my velocity is of speed of light in the material 2.099 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's how fast light travels in that material. So there's, uh, there's Snell's law. I'm sorry, I left that off the bottom. There's Snell's law in two ways. One is uh, given the angles, find the material. The other is given the material and N1 and N2, find the angles.